Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to episode five. Congratulations on getting here. We are finally dipping our toes into some really relevant stuff. We are gonna be making our character move around the screen in response to user input. Now, we are gonna utilize basically everything we've learned up to this point, plus two new concepts, one being if statements, which are uh, incredibly important to programming. Uh, and then we're also going to be going over how to take input from the player, which is actually uh, much more simple. So first of all, we're gonna introduce the if statements. So I'll go ahead and put this, I guess I'll just put this in the ready statement. I'm gonna make a new variable here uh, and we're gonna call this, uh, we'll say raining, not that, but raining. Okay, and we're gonna set this equal to true. Okay, then in the ready function here, we're going to say if raining, okay, then we're gonna say print wear a coat. Uh, I promise you we'll get past these kind of, uh, you know, print it and output type of things pretty quickly, but I think it's really important to illustrate. So, see, first thing, of course, no errors. Second thing is the structure here. We've got an if, right? Then we've got something, then we've got a colon, then we've got a, a uh, we returned a tab, and then whatever is here is going to be run. So basically we're saying if this is true, then do this, whatever is right here. So make sure that you have the structure correctly, right? Make sure you got this colon, that tab, and then also know that whatever you put here has to evaluate to true in order for whatever this is to happen. So if we run this right now, you'll see down in the console, it prints where a coat, right? Because raining is true. Now, if we go set this to false, so it's no longer raining, uh, you can see that it's not going to go ahead and print where a coat because it is false. Now, there's lots of ways that you can actually write um, is it true, whatever. So, right, you can say, well, I guess we'll start with this actually. We'll start with just raining. So if raining, okay, do this. Uh, we can also then ask if something is false, right? So right now we're saying if raining. So if it is raining, right? Uh, and then now we'll say, don't wear a coat, okay? So we wanna say like, don't wear a coat. We wanna tell a guy, you know, don't wear a coat because it's not raining. Right, so here we're still checking if it is raining. We don't want it to print whether it's raining, right? But we still want raining to be reflective of the weather. So we still want raining, if it's raining to say true, uh, and if it's not raining to say false, but we want our if statement now to change according to that to say that, okay, if it is not raining, then print this. So now not raining is actually true, even though we're asking for the opposite. So we can say if not raining, right? then don't work out. So now you can see that it'll print here because if it's not raining, because raining is false. And here, if we put true again, okay, and then run this, you can see that it doesn't print because rain, it is raining. So thus, this evaluates to false. This is the entire expression that we're evaluating, right? Not just raining. So if it is not raining, okay? Now uh, you can write this in actually several different ways you will typically see me write it and I'll probably, yeah, I mean, I should write it and not, but I'm so used to writing it with just an exclamation point. This is the exact same thing as saying not, is just putting this exclamation point. So if not raining, then do this. Uh, and that's how I'll do it. And it's easy, it, again, the exact same thing. Change this to false and then run this. You can see that it then prints, don't wear a code. Um, so that's the very, very basics of if statements, right? You're evaluating whether this statement is true or false. Now, something really, really important I would also like to get into is now uh, comparison statements. So again, this is another way to evaluate something true, let's write pass here, to true or false by using comparisons. And this is greater than, less than, equal to, uh, and I'll go ahead and illustrate this right now. So we go position, position, right? So position is a vector two. So if we say position is greater than, let's say vector two, um, and then let's go over here. Okay. Actually, no, comparing vectors is actually a tricky business. So let's do this. So let's say position dot y, okay, is greater than, mm, let's say a hundred, okay? Pass. Uh, real quick, just so I can show you, if you forgot, downwards is uh, positive, right? So 100 would be like right about here. So once they pass like right here, it should start doing something, right? So if, again, we're saying this is the entire expression that we're evaluating to see if this is true or not, right? So if, if our position in the y direction is greater than 100, then we'll print, um, I don't know, just high. It's not going to be too clever. Okay, and then you can see he moves. 
and then it starts printing high because we've gotten further than that. Of course, now you can print less than, right? And uh, then it'll print high up until that happens. Then once he does, it stops printing, although that's much harder to tell <laughs> that it stopped printing it, but it did. Uh, then we can also say if it equals it exactly, so this, now I don't think this actually will evaluate to true and it's kind of a more complicated, yeah. So it's a little more complicated, but yeah, this take my word for it. If, if this is equal to exactly this, then uh, it will work. But the reason it's actually not happening is because it never actually equals exactly 100. We're moving our speed uh, by 100 in this like weird direction right to the center. Uh, and that, all that means is that our uh, y direction actually never equals exactly 100. Um, so that's, that's just something to take into account. Also, when you're doing these comparison functions, uh, don't use the exactly equals to uh, compare floats uh, because you'll have some issues. Uh, again, just take my word for it. Uh, and then finally, okay, so we have greater than, less than, equal to. Again, make sure the very, I still do this. I still accidentally just put one equal sign. Uh, it needs to be two because the, it, one equal sign, remember, is how you assign things. We're saying this is equal to that. This is checking if it's equal to that, all right? And then to say not equal to, you just put the uh, exclamation point there like I had up there. So if position.y is not equal to 100, of course, this will print uh, the entire time. Um, now, the final two is that you can do greater than or equal to, as you'd expect, just like that. If it's greater than or equal to 100, uh, and then you can do, of course, less than or equal to 100. And those are basically what we'd, con we'd call our comparison operations. Uh, this is called the comparison operation, not the entire thing just to be clear. Now, you can also use um, the equal to and not equal to beyond just numbers. Greater than and less than, of course, is typically just numbers, right? Um, but you can say strings too. So we can say if, um, for instance, z is not equal to Godot, not 100, right? Uh, so we can compare this. So z, right, is this variable here, which says Godot. We're saying if z is not equal to Godot, print high, not gonna print it. But if we say it now, if it is equal, equal to Godot, print high, you can see that it's printing high. So that's basically the quick, dirty rundown of if statements. Now we're gonna actually use that to, um, in conjunction with taking input in order to move our player. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use input. So there's lots of ways to do input in Godot. I'm gonna be doing probably the most common way for movement. Uh, it's the way I use in all of my games. So type input with a capital I. Okay, now you can see that this is now a uh, kind of light green color, more like the sprite. And that's because like sprite is a class, input is a class, uh, and then we can call any function from that class. Just like right here, we're, we're calling the ready function from, well, not sprite technically, from the like node or whatever class. But we can we have access to all the, the uh, functions that are in included with the sprite and anything it inherits from, right? So input, we're essentially grabbing this class from somewhere else, and then we can grab any of its functions by putting, uh, pushing a, pushing, putting, putting <laughs> a decimal right there or period. And then you can grab any of its variables or any of its functions, um, right? Uh, properties or methods. Uh, and we can go ahead and say here, I'm gonna say is underscore, and you can see we've got is action just pressed, um, just released and action pressed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go to action pressed. Um, is action just pressed and just released? Is what you would use, for instance, if you're making like a semi-automatic gun uh, where you don't want them to be able to just hold down the button and spam bullets. You want them to have to hit the button every single time you want them to shoot a bullet, right? And we'll be getting into that more. Uh, once I get into scene instancing, we're gonna be going over how to make like a simple bullet and, and shoot stuff. Um, but for right now, is action pressed will basically just get down if it's held down. Uh, then this will evaluate to true, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna put these quotes here and you can see all these little things. So we'll say, we'll go down here to write, I'm gonna do write, okay? So if is action press UI write, so by default, this is the uh, right arrow key on your keyboard. Uh, if you, you wanna change this, for instance, to add WASD, you go to project, project settings, input map here, usually in general, click input map, and then you scroll down to write. Now, uh, you can you can add your own actions, right? And then, so we can put like, like uh, move underscore right, uh, and then I can add this. And then, um, well, I guess first I'll show you. So if you have right, uh, we can go ahead in here, click the plus button right next to it. Then we, I don't know what that just did. 
Okay, uh, click the plus button, click the key, and we'll put D and then hit OK. I've already added D there for uh, movement to the right. Now, same thing goes for move right. We go move right, we go here, add a key, uh, and we can add D, hit D, OK. Um, and then if you go here and you do this again, uh, you can start typing in move right, and it pops up because that you've now added it right there. So that's just basically the, the very basics of, of how you would do input, but I'm actually going to change this to UI right underscore right just like that okay so now you'll see that if i press the right key it starts printing high and not until so nothing try to make as loud so you can hear it then i print it and then and then or, and then i hit it and then it prints so super duper helpful super duper helpful um now what we're going to do of course is then make our character move right if we're pressing right so we'll say position plus equals. Now, again, we're going to follow the same formula here. Here we have direction times speed times delta. Okay, so what direction will write? So remember, we can always just do, uh, you can either do this, you can do vector uh, one, zero, or if you don't remember that, you can just do vector two dot write times our speed, which is, uh, well, we're just going to say speed, uh, and then times delta. Okay, now, if I go ahead and run our game and I hit the right key, you can see I move to the right and only when it's held down. Now, I'm gonna quickly copy and paste this here a few times so we can get full movement. Cool. Uh, again, make sure that these are capitalized. They should do that for you automatically and make sure that these are uh, exactly as they appear here. Capitalization is important in programming of all languages, particularly Godot. So if we go ahead and run this now, you can see that I actually have full range of motion over my character. But what you might notice is that he's moving a little faster diagonally um, than that he is side to side or up and down. And that is because, again, his input vector is now uh, not normalized, right? So this, these are all normal values, but if you're pressing two at once, you're getting a vector one, one, uh, rather than a vector like 0.7, whatever. Um, so that's important to note, uh, but that's not something we're gonna be going over today, exactly how to uh, put that into play because it's a little more difficult. So thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, hope you all have a great day and uh, yeah, see you next time.